right after he casts out the demons from this girl, they haul him to before the magistrates. And one of his responsibilities is the activities that happen in the theater. What's interesting, this theater in Philippi was built by Alexander the Great's father, Philip, which actually the city was first named after. So it's an old theater, but when Rome came in, they changed it a little bit. They made it so that this was not just a place where drama and plays were done, but they turned it into a place where gladiator games could happen. And you can still see it today. There was a ledge around here where a fence would have been that could have kept the wild animals out. Um, there's openings in the floor where they kept the animals below you. So you'd actually hear the lions or the hyenas or the wild dogs or whatever was being underneath there. Um, and you, there's a trap doors and things like that to bring them out. And this was what Rome was doing. And there was usually three different concepts of games that the magistrate was responsible for. And the first one was typically just wild animals, wild pack of dogs against some deer or two lions that fight it out to the death or whatever. It was, it was animal battles. And typically that was the first games in the day. And then it would progress further um, to where you would have gladiator against animals. So a trained soldier fighting off whatever wild animal. But as the afternoon got on, it became more bloody. Then the gladiators would fight slaves or prisoners. And then the main battle now is gladiators against gladiators to the death. And Paul was using this idea in a lot of his teaching. It's hard for us to grasp this, but Unfortunately, something had happened in Philippi that caused a problem. And in chapter 4, he writes, I beseech Eudeus and I beseech Syntyche that it be of the same mind in the Lord. And I entreat you, it says yoke fellow or um, true companion, help these women since they have contended at my side in the cause of the gospel. It's interesting in these gladiatorial games, you would have these soldiers facing, so it'd be three on three or whatever the teams were, and they would face each other, and they would literally basically, you got my back, I got yours, you take the front, I got this side, you got that side. And it's, it's a concept to where they contended together. And for some reason, imagine this in the theater, you're sitting in the theater and you see these gladiators out and as the three are fighting, one of the guys accidentally steps on the ankle of the other gladiator and they start yelling at each other. Yes, there's other people getting ready to kill them, but they're, now they're yelling at each other and then they, they start fighting each other. Imagine what's going on. The crowd will go crazy and laugh at them. What are you doing? You're going to die. Now you're going to kill each other? And Paul says, help these women. Help them. They contended with me. They were literally fighting arm in arm with me. Don't you realize the crowd is laughing at us? We can't get along with each other. You're in a fight among yourself? The lions are coming. The gladiators are coming to kill you. And you're just going to fight it out yourself? He says, this isn't the kingdom of heaven. This distorts what this idea is. How can we show the world what the kingdom of heaven is like if we can't even get along? And the crowds laugh at us. How attractive is Christianity today? How much of the world laughs at us because we can't get along? So many times you have sin creeping in and the leaders fall and the world laughs. And Paul doesn't say, kick them out, help them. Don't you understand? Their names are in the book of life. They need to get along because then the kingdom of heaven can come. 